Father God, as we come together now, I pray for your spirit just to come upon us. Just to fill us now. You're here, Father. Let's fill your church. Fill your people. Thus breathe upon us now. Father, we thank you for those songs of worship we sang which express your love coming down, your love within us. Thank you for the intimacy we can have with you. Amen. Please take your seats. Galatians 5.14 says these words, You shall love your neighbour as yourself. You should love your neighbour as yourself. And uh, if I ask you a question, who your neighbour is, you may think automatically my next door neighbour is my neighbour, because uh, that's what we're used to in our culture. But in the time when this was written, a neighbour was someone you were connected with, or people you were connected with outside of your community. Jesus is speaking to the Jews with this and saying to them, look, because you're the chosen people, everyone outside of your circle, you treat like rubbish. You treat them as uh, nothing, as people who are worthless. And what Jesus was saying to them, look, treat those people you're connected with outside of your community with love. Love them as you love yourself. And that's what Jesus asked for us. Love for neighbour is love in action, doing something specific and tangible for others. To love someone, it's a decision to love. We went to America for a couple of weeks to see family, to see Doug and Marcy. Remember Doug and Marcy? We saw them as well. They say hello. They said hello back. Hello. Okay. When we came back, we had a slight issue. Uh, our beds were covered with bed bugs. In the bed, that's why they're called bed bugs. In the house, in the bed, in the beds, yeah. No, not our, of course our house, yes, our house, Carol, yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> so we called pest control over. And um, this guy came into our house, and uh, I felt instantly that this is going to be a situation where God's going to do something. You know, I thought, there's something going on here. And the guy just told me about, oh, he's been uh, in a relationship for 10 years, 12 years. I, you know, I had a picture of my beautiful Wendy. This is Wendy there in the middle there, the blonde one. Not that one, that's Jenny. Just Jenny. Wendy's the one over there. I goes, oh, we've been married 28 years. I wasn't trying to big it up or anything. And then the conversation went on, because I, I saw there was sort of a, something in his face was saying to me he wasn't quite happy. And uh, he said to me, um, when I first dated uh, my wife, um, I was seeing someone else at the same time. Not a good thing. In fact, the person he was seeing was his brother's fiancé, which was a, even a, a better thing. But what happened, his, fiance, his brother's fiancé broke up with her, with him, and uh, he um, got his girlfriend at the time pregnant, who he's been with ever since. And he's saying, I've been in this relationship for 10 years, we've got two or three kids now, 
But ever since I've been with her, I've been thinking about this other girl ever since. And I said to him, you know, to love someone is a decision. To love someone is up to you to love someone. It's not a feeling. It's not um, uh, that gooey feeling you feel when you first started dating someone or what have you. It's a decision to love. I said to him, when is the last time you've done something for her out of kindness? When's the last time you bought her flowers? When's the last time you took her out for a meal? When's the last time you've done this, that, that and the other? An act of kindness. Because when you start doing these things in these relationships, things follow on through. And... uh, I then said to him, look, we've been, Wendy and I have been married for 28 years, but the key to our relationship is, yes, uh, Wendy's always right and I'm always wrong. But, um, no, that's not the key to our relationship. The key to our relationship is that we love each other and we always try and put each other first. I get it wrong a lot of the time, but um, we always try and put each other first. But also, having that relationship with God in the centre makes a big difference. So uh, I had a good half an hour, 45 minutes of um, talk with this guy, and the bed bugs were probably breeding upstairs at the same time. So, uh, <laughs> but the thing about it is, it's to love someone, to love people around you, is a decision to love. So we have a choice with the people around us, yes, our partners, yes, our wives, yes, our husbands, to love them. But it's the same thing with the everyday people we meet each day. It's a decision to love and do things for them out of kindness. Now, we was at um, a Stevie Wonder concert. Part of the um, part of the uh, form, we went to see basically Lewis Hamilton in Austin, Texas. Wendy and I, when we was there, race around the track, and in the evening there was uh, a Stevie Wonder concert. And um, I went with my cousin's uh, husband, who's Polish, but also who's a Jehovah Witness as well. And uh, basically, we went to this concert because Wendy and the others decided to go back. And uh, most people are taller than me. So um, we got to the front, but there was two or three people in front of us who were sort of, um, well, even Sabrina's taller than me. So... uh, Most people are tall. So so basically, I could just see through the gaps what was going on. And um, behind us, there were two girls. And they were shorter than me. And what happened, halfway during the concert, the people in front of us, uh, uh, that's that's when when, and left. So we had this front view of the concert. I said to my uh, Polish cousin, stroke, in-law thing, let's give it up to the girls. Let's let them have the, 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 the view. So we, we, we stepped back, we gave them the view. I was OK because I was taller than them as well. And they could see the front view of Stevie Wonder. It was, we were still quite far away because there's VIP stuff in front of us. But it's just showing love in that way to people randomly you don't meet. And it shows you the essence of God. We done evangelism out on the Broadway uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, there were some um, people out there who were basically living on the streets on the bench. And they, they would sit there and chat, have a few drinks, and then um, try and find somewhere to sleep over the night time. Jonathan Fitzwater was with us, and Joe got out of his, his uh, wallet, went to Subway, and bought five rounds of Subway for himself, no, for these guys, and gave it to them to eat, and uh, we just walked away. But Joe's acts of love to people around you make a difference to those people's lives.
It's important for us to be people who follow what God wants us to do. Let me give you a little illustration. Wendy has um, difficulty with her back now and again. And uh, just before we was going to um, America, her, her back wasn't in a good way. So uh, we rang up, uh, we, we changed our ticket to get assistance at the airport to the plane. And we got to the airport with our suitcases, went to the assistance area. They took our bags, took us straight to the front of check-in. There's all these zigzags of people there, straight in there at the front. Okay, no problem at all, straight in there. Bags got checked in. Took us to security. About 200 people in security in front of us, straight in front of everyone. Okay. And then took us to this place where you sit down to the plane. Then they took us on the plane, first on the plane, straight in front. Oh, sorry, the plane's full. We'll have to upgrade you. Yeah, so you got upgraded, free of charge, that was good as well. And basically, life was so much easier for Wendy, but also for me, because I was with her. We just sort of fast tracked through everything and got on that plane and the same on the way back as well on the way back as well. And you know, it's like that when we follow God. We fast track in life when we go through God his way. I'm not saying things are going to be easy, but he's in the driving seat of our life. And we are to be that person of God where we allow him in, not as for that holiday, but throughout each day. We have a, this intimate relationship with God where God wants to be part of our everyday life. And that is to be shared with everyone we're connected with as well. Before we went to America, I was quite distressed because um, we had so much work going out of the door in our company, I couldn't see how he was going to get it out the door in time and meet the deadlines. And I, I, looked, I looked at every situation I could do to get more people in to help out, and nothing happened. So I said to God, this was, this was the third month Tuesday before we was going to go away, I was going to go away on a Monday. We had all this work in our factory to get out the door. I said, Father, send someone to my factory on Thursday by 10 o'clock in the morning who can weld and fabricate. And I gave it up to God. I felt I had to pray a prayer like that. And for some reason, I was full of peace when I said that prayer. This has happened once before, and that was three, four years ago, where someone else randomly turned up and we didn't have any work anyway. At 10 o'clock on Thursday, my foreman says, hey, there's a guy here to see you. Do you want to just chat to him? This was at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. This was a South African guy who was looking for work who's just come out of the blue. And if you went to our factories, it's down a, a, an alleyway, no one would know it's even there. He turns up, he says, uh, what, do you, what can you do? I can weld, I can fabricate. Okay? When can you start? Now. So he started that day. He goes, I can, I can do three or four days. That's okay, that's what I need you for. Okay? And he got all the work out the door. That's what it is to have an intimate relationship with God, isn't it? We've all got that opportunity with God. I've done it again last week, and then nothing happened. But I mean, uh, <laughs> but God is like that. God is like that. I was so surprised when that person turned up. I shouldn't have been surprised. But he's intimate. He knows 
directly what we need at a certain time, and he meets those needs. Let's go back to that one verse. Love your neighbours as you love yourself. There's a big key in the middle of that passage. And the big key in that passage is, as you love yourself. So the question I want to ask you is, when you see yourself, do you love what you see? Do you love what you see? Because how you see yourself reflects how you treat others around you. So if you do not love yourself, if you do not like what you see, it affects how we relate with God and how we relate with others around us. We have been created and made in the image of God. When God created us, he made us in his image. Jesus is an exact mirror image of God. And uh, it's funny we looked at the names, you know, Jesus in different languages. Because on the board here, this is who Jesus is. He's all these things and more written on that board. He's the King of Kings. He is God. He is Deliverer. He is Messiah. He is Saviour. He is Alpha. He is all these many, many, many things. And those of you who believe in Jesus are children of the living God. Press the next slide, Joy. Joy. And this is who you are in Jesus. You're all those things. So when we connect with people, when we are to love people like ourselves, let's remember our own identity of who we are. Because each of us in this room are that person through Jesus. You are all children of the living God, those who believe in Jesus. And those attributes are part of your being, of who you are. So you are all powerful people of God who are there to make a difference of love with people around you. Yeah? So, wouldn't it be great if we lived in a place, say like Greenford and Northolt, where there were hundreds of Christians scattered around the area, living in various roads within the community, where we would be connected with the community and the people around us. Wouldn't that be a great place to be involved with, wouldn't it? If we Google mapped Greenford Baptist Church and each individual person who came to this church, Greenford, North Holt, Yedin, uh, Southall, will be peppered with people from this church everywhere. And each of you have been put there to connect. Each of you have been put there to love. Each of you have been put there to make a difference with those people 
around you. Each of you are there to meet with those neighbours. And, uh, you know, for us to actually make a difference and an impact in our community, we need to stop thinking of how we can get people into a building, but to be part of the community where the people are at. So it means connecting naturally with the people around us, which can be very hard. Now, three or four years ago, I would say Wendy and I didn't really have much contact with our neighbours at all. In fact, we saw them now and again, and what happened uh, on our road is that all the elderly folk who once were there have all died and moved on. And about three or four years ago, the neighbours on our left uh, moved into a home and uh, sold up. And the neighbours on our right moved out as well and sold up. And uh, I remember when they sold their house, uh, this young couple uh, were messing around in the back of the alley, going, what's going on here? And they said, oh, we're the new owners. We bought the property. And uh, had a chat with them, took them into the, our house, had a coffee with them. And um, just that one moment connected us with those neighbours. And they're Polish. And um, what's been happening is that they come in and chat with Wendy. I come in and chat with them. They go and see Chelsea football with me, which is good as well. Um, uh, we look after their daughter now and again. And uh, a connection's happened there. On November the 5th, we, um, we had fireworks and we had them over. We've also got a connection with the neighbours next door who are Polish as well. And again, we met for November the 5th. New Year's Day last year, we were invited for a New, Year, New Year's party at their house, and uh, we celebrated New Year's twice, Polish New Year and English New Year. But the thing about it is, is that something's happening there which um, is just natural. And, uh, you know, God's really done something new there. But when we, first, when we first moved into that property, which is my parents' old house, we were doing some building work outside. And um, this is how things can go wrong. Uh, we were cutting up bricks outside and all the dust from the bricks were going over the neighbour's car uh, opposite us. And uh, I, thought it, I thought it was quite a nice colour. But... Um, <laughs> They weren't, they weren't happy at all. They said to me, you should be ashamed of yourself. How would your parents think, uh, how would your parents think uh, what you're doing? Because I knew my parents quite well. So I had a choice to sort of um, have a go and kick off or just to back off and say, yep, you're right. You're right. I'll go and do it at the back of the house. And we did that. So we messed up our back garden rather than just having a few bits of dust on the cars outside, which was, a, which, which, which was the thing to do, I thought. But the reason I'm sharing this is this. Some of you here are reluctant to connect with your neighbours because of past situations which have occurred whether it could be because of a fence which is knocked down and not being rebuilt, whether it could be because uh, your branch has been cut and because uh, and it, it's overlooking their garden, whether it could be anything silly or what, what have you, but there's ongoing stuff going on which has gone on for years and years and years and years and years. And what I'll say to you is this. 
Ask God for an avenue to show kindness and love in that situation. You see, if we are to try and do these things in under our own strength, how it's going to happen? But if we do things through the grace of God living through us, it's a big difference because it's God working through us. When I was working at, this is an old story, you may have heard it before, when I was working with British Gas, I was the young boy there, 16, age 16, 17, yeah, 16, and they, one of these ladies used to treat me like rubbish. You know, you're the young boy who's working there. And I became a Christian, and uh, she rubbished that as well. And we used to, I used to get run-ins every day with her, every day. But I knew she liked, remember treats? Yeah. M&Ms, they're called now? The little chocolate ones, little chocolate things? Nuts. Nuts in it? There was a chocolate machine downstairs. So every day for about a week, I bought an M- a, a treat, put it on her desk and walked away. And then she found out it was me doing it. She never offered me any, but uh, her whole attitude turned around just because of that simple act of spending 10p in those days, not 50p like today, on a bag of treats. And you know, how can we do things to connect with our neighbours? Now, this week is a this time of the year is a bad year for gardening but we're in the garden as much as we can and uh, there's leaves everywhere in my driveway in my neighbour's driveway in my driveway <coughs> so I've got one of those vacuum cleaner things you know you, shush, you, know, one of those, it's like, you know you feel like Rambo out of uh, this big thing here so I've done my, I've done my garden then afterwards I've done my two neighbours' gardens as well. I haven't said I've done it, but I've done it. And uh, I, I've just done it. No, 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 nothing to, nothing to say, just done it. But it's things like that which make a difference. So stop talking to your neighbours about coming to a church event. Just start connecting with them and loving them and maybe inviting them around for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And that may lead to something more bigger like come over for dinner. Because that is our true mission field of who we are to reach. Remember who you are in Christ. And as you show love to people around you, it shouts so many things out. When we was in America, one of the things Wendy and I prayed about was, look, we're going to my aunt's house, and they've been Jehovah Witnesses for 30, 40 years, and and we're staying in this house, and we think, we want to impact this household somehow. And uh, my Polish cousin-in-law came to the Formula One with us. And um, he went for the whole weekend with us. And his wife came as well, but she didn't, come, she didn't come around the track with us. But whilst we was walking around the track over the three days, I was able to connect with quite a few people and chat to people randomly. Uh, there may be four or five on a bus, there may be two queuing up somewhere, there may be someone queuing up for food, and he was there with me. And um, he noticed something about how Wendy and I related to people in terms of not necessarily talking about God outrightly, but just the connections we could get. And he said to me, you know, at the end of this weekend, you could have filled a coach with the amount of people you spoke to. I said to him, yeah, it's natural. You know, I'm wired probably differently to a lot of people, but it's natural. But what it means is, is that sometimes you can get a conversation about Jesus in that conversation. 
Now, when we came back, about three days later, we was in the car with him, and he was questioning his Jehovah Witness faith, asking us about what we believed in, asking us all these different things, saying he felt pressurised in, in what he is and what he's, what, he, what, what he's become. And, you know, he didn't, he didn't become a Christian there and then, but a seed has been planted. So as you love your neighbours around you, others will see the love within you and people will question why you're doing it. Let's stand, shall we, church? <coughs> Next flyer, please, Joe. Tomorrow night, we are doing something quite powerful, those who you can turn up. I won't be there because I'll be at Alpha. But we are praying for the community. And it all starts off with prayer. To connect with the people around you, it all starts off by praying for the community around you. When you pray, strongholds are broken down. Also, there's this stuff going on. I think there's a thing called Christmas next month. There's loads of things going on during Christmas. And again, we are dotted around this whole area of Greenford and Northall and uh, Yedin and Southall. And uh, we want to bless the community by walking around the community and breaking down strongholds by praying and probably delivering these through doors as well. Let's regroup as a church. Let's regroup and take ground with the power of love. Stop talking about Jesus, demonstrate it. Stop talking, demonstrate it. Think of something you could do this week for someone out of the ordinary. Amen. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.